Mid-2024 is here, which means it's time to look back over the first half of the year and pull together a list of the best albums newly released in 2024 so far. I like doing a mid-year list every year, and if you want a bit more bite-sized look at albums new and old, check out my new short series dubbed 60 Second Album Reviews. As always, I'm going to start out with a few quick honorable mentions. Two honorable mentions I really need to dig into more include Interplay by the original shoegaze era band Ride. This one so far has evaded me, and I just haven't had the attention span to really get into it and appreciate it, though they've long been a band I've paid close attention to. I don't know what it is this year, but for some reason it's just not grabbing my attention though I know in time it will. The other one is Lives Outgrown by Portishead frontwoman Beth Gibbons. I've given it one full listen, that's really it. And I really enjoy the dynamic nature of the album, pulling in strings and other things somewhat familiar to fans of her other band, but without the trip-hop elements that are its signature. It's a fascinating listen, but I haven't dug into it enough to really feel comfortable including it on this list. At least not yet. All right, let's get started. Number 10, Dark Times by Vince Staples. Though Dark Times by Vince Staples dropped in late May of 2024, the standard vinyl pressing won't hit until mid-July. Still, I gotta include it on this list. Characterized by blunt recountings of gang violence and dry humor, Staples mirrors it all with candid storytelling that shows personality. Dark Times builds on past projects by blending personal trauma with his current growing celebrity status. There's a monotony to the production and the vocal delivery that is poised and pleasant. Number nine, Faye Webster, Underdressed at the Symphony. Faye Webster's fifth album, Underdressed at the Symphony, reflects her desire for privacy and escape from the public eye. This record emphasizes acoustic sounds and features extended instrumental sections, seeing Webster step back from the mic and let her band and silence fill the space in between. Though it loosely appears to be a breakup album, she avoids delving into too many personal details, opting for simple, repeated phrases and guest features to kind of obscure her vulnerability while creating songs that fully lean into that trait. Favorites include Lifetime, Thinking About You, and But Not Kiss. Underdressed at the Symphony offers gentle melodies and extended jams, showcasing Webster's comfort in the background. Number eight, Ty Siegel. Three Bells. After a few years to seemingly be off my list, despite continued output, Ty Siegel returns with Three Bells. Siegel is one of the more prolific indie rock artists out there, and Three Bells sees him continuing this trend. Like many of his more recent records, this one sees him stepping away from some of the heavier, louder, and more abrasive sounds of his earlier days. There are interesting time signatures, like in opener The Bell. You get more acoustics throughout, and he utilizes more vocal harmonies as well. But he still drops in plenty of powerful and noisy bits too. Overall, what you get is a more intricate, more dynamic, and quite well-rounded album. Seven, Shellac, To All Trains. Shalek, like Steve Albini, has always been a bit abrasive for those not entirely familiar. Like many casual fans, I was kind of unaware of the return of the band until the passing of founding member and famed recording engineer Albini last month. A week after his death, the band released Two All Trains, blending post-rock and math rock. The new Shalek album is just as in-your-face as anything else by the band, and it's poised to posthumously catapult Albini's group into many best of lists this year. Number six, Camera Obscura. And we finally get to something I actually have in my collection. The Scottish indie pop band Camera Obscura return after about a decade of hiatus post the passing of keyboardist Carrie Lander in 2015 from a rare form of bone cancer. Filling Lander's shoes is Donna Machocha, who officially joined the group in 2023. 
Look to the East, Look to the West is their new album, and it blends indie pop with elements of country and electronic influences. Featuring early singles like Big Love and We're Gonna Make It In A Man's World, the album sees the group maturing and furthering their signature style and strong storytelling. Personal favorites include opener Liberty Print, which highlights Machocha's impactful contributions, and the title track that closes the album on a catchy high note. This release marks a truly triumphant return for the band. Number five, Waxahachie and Tiger's Blood. Talking to my bestie last week about Waxahachie's 2024 album, Tiger's Blood, we both agreed that it's a bit of a sleeper. Steeped in country-inspired indie folk, which is nothing new to frontwoman Katie Crutchfield, she leans even more into the influence here. The first time I listened to the album, I dismissed it almost entirely, but something drew me back and I was intrigued. Then I got drawn back again and I started to like it. Each time I dig in, I become more and more obsessed. Beyond the phenomenal single Right Back To It, this is an album that will pull you in, not right away, but over time. There's a reason it's topped a few mid-year best of 2024 lists, and that reason is a good one. Number four, Adrian Linker and Bright Future. The presence of Adrian Linker on this list is really no surprise to me. Linker fronts the band Big Thief, which has absolutely dominated my turntable the past five years. Linker's 2024 solo release, Bright Future, finds the artist creating yet another highly vulnerable indie folk masterpiece with songs like Sadness as a Gift, Fool, and my personal favorite, Ruined. I was able to catch Big Thief early this year, and they played Vampire Empire, a new track that found it onto a limited edition 7-inch single, which I haven't picked up. But here, Linker includes it as a closeout to the A-side. It comes across more like a demo than a cohesive component of the album as a whole, but I'm really not complaining. It's a great track, and Bright Future is truly a great album. Number three. The Smile and Wall of Eyes. Blending jazz, prog, electronic, and more, The Smile is Radiohead's Tom York and Johnny Greenwood, alongside Sons of Comet drummer Tom Skinner. On Wall of Eyes, their second offering, the band continues to diverge significantly from Radiohead's style while maintaining a unique groove within equally dark themes. The album opens with the title track, showcasing Skinner's jazz influence and York's solo style vocals. Tracks like Teleharmonic delve into eerie, echoey darkness, while Read the Room stands out with this haunting keys and punchy vocals. I absolutely love the bass line in it. Prague influence shines in Under the Pillows with angular guitar riffs, and the dynamics in Bending Hectic feature dramatic crescendos that make it a powerhouse sleeper track. Like many on this list, there really aren't weak points here. Truly phenomenal record. Number two, The Decemberists. As it ever was, so shall it be again. When The Decemberists drop their 19-minute opus, Joan in the Garden, a few months back, after pretty much a decade not paying attention to the band's new stuff, I was suddenly laser-focused. This is what I've been missing from the band. This eclectic blend of storytelling, movement-oriented songs, and a uh, heavy-hitting tune that makes the word epic kind of seem cool again. And so I made the near 10-hour trek from Dallas to Nashville last month to catch the band at the Ryman Auditorium. And they did not disappoint. I've been dubbing it my favorite concert from the last 10 years. One of my biggest concerns was that they gave away all the good stuff early. But as it ever was, so it shall be again, which just came out last week in mid-June 2024, there are plenty of hidden gems within. In addition to early releases like Oh No and the wonderful love song, all I Want Is You, we now have amazing new tracks to dig into like The Reapers and The Black Mariah. And I'm just getting started with the album. Sure to be a favorite come year's end as well. And that brings us to number one, and this should be no surprise if you follow my channel. It is Dive with Frog in Boiling Water. Frog in Boiling Water is Dive's fourth LP and my most anticipated new album of 2024. 
dig in and it makes everything they've released before sound a bit amateur. And I love what came before. The album flows impeccably from the heavy brooding opener in Amber to the soft and subtler and even more mellow outro Fender on the Freeway. Early favorites include Brown Paper Bag, Everyone Out, and Soul Net, yet the album really has no weak points. Once again, less angular than their prior work, Frog and Boiling Water seems to push further into the sonic shoegaze soundscapes, casting dreamy walls of sound that oscillate between pleasant and deafening. So there it is. There's my list. I'd love to know what some of your favorites are so far as well, whether they're on my list or not. So feel free to drop them down in the comments. As one person said mm, a while back, and people seem to continuously do when they join the Fence Post membership right here on YouTube for just $2 a month, which is nothing to support this channel. This dude is a damn nerd. I am Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl channel. Next, why not check out what my favorites were from 2023? There might be some interesting stuff in there that maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.